What's up everyone? In today's video, we are going to be talking about 90s grunge style graphics. I put up a poll and you guys voted for this to be the next tutorial. So today we're going to break down some of the most iconic 90s grunge band t-shirts of all time. And I'm going to show how you can create similar graphics inside Photoshop. Let's go. <laughs> What's up everyone? So first of all, thank you to all the new subscribers that are here. Thank you to everyone who's been subscribed. Um, this channel has grown so much in the last, you know, few months. Um, I'm blown away. So I only have you guys to thank for that. So thank you very much. So today's topic is one of my all time favorite graphic styles. It is 90s grunge. We're talking Nirvana, Soundgarden, you know, Marilyn Manson, Nine Inch Nails, all these bands who have really iconic imagery and um, you know if you go on Grail or you go on eBay you're gonna end up paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars for these vintage t-shirts um, obviously you know someone like Jerry Lorenzo has really kind of shed light on how dope these graphics are with you know I don't know if everyone knows this but fear of God started out um, as fear vintage so that's sort of what put him on the map was like taking all of these like authentic, you know, 90s vintage t-shirts, putting fear of God on them, you know, styling, styling them in certain ways and just like showing everyone like how dope really like that grunge era is like from an aesthetic standpoint. So, um, you know, now you'll see, you know, Travis Scott will be wearing a Nine Inch Nails shirt. You'll see fucking Justin Bieber is wearing Marilyn Manson. This has been something that I've wanted to do for a long time, and hopefully, you know, you guys will be into it. So I think we can just jump into my computer and I'll kind of show you guys what's going on. So basically what I did was I created a mood board of, um, you know, some of the most iconic 90s grunge t-shirt graphics. So, you know, basically the idea here is I want to sort of just look at this and sort of dissect what makes, you know, a shirt, a grunge style t-shirt. Like if you look at all of these, like what are some of the common themes that we're seeing um, that we can, you know, apply to a new design? So obviously like this is a technique that is really useful if you're just trying to capture like, you know, an overall vibe. So, you know, if you were doing boot like rap shirts, you could, you could lay out a bunch of different, um, you know, authentic bootleg wrap shirts, see what some of the common themes are, like are some of the fonts the same, are the color palettes the same, and basically use that as a reference to, you know, create the vibe, right? So let's look at some of these. Um, so the one thing that I see right off the bat is there's often one graphic that is, that is very prominent and really no, nothing else around it, right? So like, look at this, this is a Nine Inch Nails t-shirt. So, you know, we've got a flower here, we've got, you know, a face with what again, sort of looks like um, petals of a flower here. We've got the the rope, um, you know, kind of tied up into, into a circle for this. This is the shirt I'm wearing right now. Um, you know, even like this um, window pane uh, Pearl Jam shirt is like, this is very much the focus of the t-shirt. The um, band name is very much secondary. So, you know, with the exception of this, maybe this Alice in Chains design here, um, and this Nirvana shirt, like for the most part, the band name or any text on the t-shirt is sort of like secondary and clean, right? So let's keep that in mind when we're making our new graphic, like having a, something, um, prominent and singular and then just adding some clean text next to it, right? So what else can we take from this mood board that we can apply to our new design? So I'm seeing a lot of fairly saturated colors, right? Like this yellow is, is relatively bright. Same thing down here with the Nirvana example, the Smashing Pumpkins, uh, real saturated and, and yellow, like tinted kind of yellowish, right? Same thing with this Manson uh, t-shirt up here. So we can keep that in mind as well. Um, you know, if we wanted to do like another common theme I'm seeing like right here in a row, we've got, you know, just a plain box with like a very 
abstract, oddly colored um, image inside of it. You know, just simple text up top. This is the, the Sliver t-shirt from Nirvana. Obviously this was hugely popular um, and still is. Um, here we've got, you know, the Alice in Change. I know, um, did, I, did I just say Alice in, in Change? Alice in Chains. <laughs> uh, T-shirt, this one, I, this is, Jerry has worn this one, uh, this Nine Inch Nails one, again, just in a box. Real simple stuff, but, you know, colored in, in an odd way that makes it a lot more interesting and unique. So these are all things that we're gonna keep in mind when we create our new T-shirt. So I have something that is ready to go um, that I created based on, you know, all the things that I'm saying here. So let's take a look at that. So this is what I came up with. Um, you know, this is a design that, you know, obviously has a lot of the characteristics of what I was talking about. You know, it has um, uh, one object sort of in the forefront that's the focus of it. It's a little bit weird, it's a little bit dark. Um, you know, I, I picked out a snail just because, like I noticed like, right, there's like this weird insect and then I looked at this rope and it resembles a snail I don't know if that was intentional or not, but um, that was the first thing that came, that came to mind. So I wanted to use that in my design. And then I threw in this eclipse just as like a secondary image, um, just to sort of spice it up because like, you know, obviously like if you're looking at this design or this Nine Inch Nails design, this is like from album artwork. So um, it kind of works on its own, but since this is like a brand new concept and like, Soundgarden isn't necessarily affiliated with snails in any way. I sort of wanted to add something else and so they have, you know, obviously their biggest hit is Black Hole Sun. So I added in this eclipse um, to sort of lend itself to the, the theme of the band, which is obviously something that's pretty important when you're doing um, band merchandise. So I'm gonna show now basically how I created this design, all the different techniques that I used and uh, yeah, everything that went into it. So we are basically just going to deconstruct this and work backwards um, so I can show you guys how I got to this place. So the first thing that I did was I jumped on our trusty old um, favorite stock photography website, Pexels. Uh, Pexels.com, um, I'm in no way affiliated with Pexels. If, if Pexels wants to cut me a check, that'd be dope because this is like the third video where I've shouted them out, it's whatever. Um, but, <laughs> so I basically searched right here, you can see uh, snail, right? So boom, right away, I saw this one and I was like, yo, that is exactly like what we're looking for. It had this dope like shell that like goes around in a spiral and like, it was just super dope. So I grabbed this one, free download, click that. It's over here on the desktop, drag it into Photoshop. And um, I mean, I guess let's just work on this same canvas since it's already set up, right? If you don't already know, um, if you were to open a whole new canvas, you go to File New. I always do 15 by 25 inches at 300 PPI. So all of that info is right here. Just plug that in and click Create and you will be good to go. So let's uh, ditch this for now so we can just basically start with a clean slate go over to our snail image, hit command A, grab everything, command C to copy, back over into our canvas, command V, we'll paste it in. So from here, it's already relatively big, so that's cool, but I am just gonna resize it a bit because you know we want this snail to be the main focus and uh, be relatively large on the design. So from here, we are going to do everyone's favorite task of cutting out this shape. Now, I always say this in, in any video where I'm cutting things out, um, there are several different methods you can use for this. Some people like to use this magnetic lasso tool. Some people like to use the polygonal lasso tool. Some people use the method that I'm showing here. Um, there's probably, you know, 10 other different methods you could use, but this is what I do. Um, this is what works for me, so let's get into it. Basically, I'm just going to grab the uh, brush tool over here. I'm going to make sure the hardness is up to 100% and then I'm going to bring the size to a little bigger than that maybe like 
yeah, that'll probably work. Let's say, let's just call it 40 for um, easy math. So 40 pixels for the brush. And then basically just go in here and um, create a new layer and just paint in, um, you know, along the shape of the snail. And, you know, trying to get these details as much as possible. And I'm actually, I think, going to make this brush a little bit smaller. Let's go down to like about half the size. Okay. And, you know, um, I also say in any video where I'm cutting things out, um, I tend to go a little bit faster in these tutorials just so I'm not like boring you guys to death and, um, you know, taking up too much time. But ordinarily, you know, if I were to do this, I would be way more meticulous and pay um, way more attention to, to the small details of catching everything in this image. Um, but, you know, for the sake of this tutorial and, and wanting to get you guys, uh, you know, going on your own as fast as possible, I'm just going to sort of cruise through this. Now we've got this uh, basic outline going, right? I want everyone to pay attention to this because um, this is probably the most frequently asked question that I get um, in terms of like the technical aspect of designing, at least for my tutorials. Um, what you want to do from here is grab the magic wand tool and then with anti-alias and contiguous checked up here, make sure you're on your layer that is your outline and click inside of the of the area, right? Don't click on the snail with the with the snail, you know, highlighted over here or whatever your object is because this is what's going to happen. So make sure you're on your outline layer. So once you've clicked in there, all I do is go to the background layer, do command J, which throws up, you know, the general shape that you created and then I'll usually just make it whatever color the outline is. And then you see these little lines, hit the stroke, and um, I'll usually use center or outside, but you just have to just adjust the size until that little stroke is gone. So here, I mean, we can just make it like, what? Maybe four, six, six? Yeah, that works. So now we have a nice shape, right? And then you merge the two layers. So this is the layer that we created from the background. This is the, the outline that we drew. And then we just double, uh, not double click. Then you just have this top layer highlighted, hold down shift, click the other layer, right click, and um, merge layers. So now we've got the shape all on its own. Then you take the, um, the image that you're cutting out move it up on top of the shape and then click the photo layer and you create clipping mask. Now again, there are a bunch of different methods for this, so do whatever you want to do, but this is what I like doing. So from here, you know, I'll basically go in and uh, clean it up, you know, where I, where I need to. This is sort of like an odd image, so there is a bunch of like random stuff that was kind of hard to, to see while cutting it out. So I'm just going to go in here and sort of clean up, you know, what I need to. Okay, so this will definitely work. Um, you know, I've cleaned a few things up and um, this is looking fine to me. So from here, I will basically um, highlight both of these layers, you know, click this layer, hold down shift, click this layer and that will highlight both of them. And then I'm going to do Command G to group them. And then I'm gonna duplicate it. So I'll always have this that I can go back to if I need to for any reason. Um, then I'm going to take our duplicated group. I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert to Smart Object. Um, so this will basically allow us to apply 
um, you know, a bunch of different effects on it, and then we can adjust them as needed as we go along without being um, destructive. So let's jump into some of the effects that I would, um, you know, get started with. So the first thing I would do is try to get rid of some of the like green that is in this and turn that to more of like a black color so it, it um, blends in with the t-shirt a bit more. So to, so to do that, I'm going to go to image adjustments and uh, levels. And that will basically allow me to play with the highlights, shadows, and midtones. Just sort of adjust them accordingly. And this is really just like, kind of just eyeballing things and, and just, you know, trying to, to move um, the values to, to where you want them to be. So there's no like secret formula of like, yeah, just make it 29.70, like that's not a thing. So, you know, you can see this is making quite a huge difference here we click off the levels and um, it looks obviously much better. So that's the first step that I would take with this particular image. Um, from here, I would actually jump right into using some selective color on it. So we're gonna go to image adjustments, selective color, and I'm gonna use the, the bootleg wrap selective pack that I have available um, on my website. Um, it's sort of, misleading in that it's called bootleg wrap because in reality it can be applied to any sort of like vintage style t-shirt you know that's that's a full color graphic so um, you'll see that it works you know great for this so this is already looking cooler and more and more like grunge style um, just on the very first option so let's just go through these and see which one looks good that's pretty strange I think I'm gonna go with the first one so now we have sort of like a, a yellow tint going on here. It's, it's been desaturated a little bit. I think I'm going to ultimately want it to be more saturated, but that's something we can do um, down the line. So from here, I think I'm going to add in that Eclipse uh, graphic. And so we're just going to jump right back to Pexels. I'm going to put in Eclipse. And it's, in this case, literally the first um, photo on there, so that was pretty convenient. So from here, Command A, grab the whole thing, uh, Command, whoops, Command C, gotta copy it, go back to our design, Command V underneath our snail, and we've got it in there. So right now, I'm just resizing a little bit using the um, arrow, or the move tool. Um, basically, you want, you know, all of the imagery to feel like it's got the same, um, you know, obviously the same colors and like the same tonality, I guess, if, if that's the right word. So what I would do is first convert it to a smart object, and then I'm going to bump the contrast up, take the brightness down. I don't really need to use levels on this because it's just like, it's essentially almost like two colors, you know, it's like a yellow and black, so this will work just fine. Um, but then I'm going to apply the same bootleg, um, the same bootleg selective color option to it so that it has, you know, the same feel as this, like automatically because it's just, the settings are automated. So it basically just, you know, makes it look like any other image that is used that preset. So this is looking pretty cool. So one thing you could do to sort of mess with this main image and try out some like weird unique uh, colors. It's a very simple method that I use which is okay so let's rename this snail. So take this snail image and if you duplicate it so I'm just doing command J that duplicates the image or the layer and then I will invert it command um, I and like that on its own looks all right I mean it doesn't look super cool but then I'll go to like difference and that is going to create these like um, you know crazy color combinations that you know if you look at a t-shirt like this sliver option um, or this nine inch nails option like you'll see like that's really sort of how they get to that point so from here you could mess with the hue and you know, you'll come up with some really pr 
pretty like dope like color combinations just doing this and you know you're still maintaining the you know high resolution of the image um but yeah that's just this would probably look better on like white to be honest yeah you know but um that could definitely be a move um so that's that's a recommendation that I would make if you guys are just experimenting and trying to see what looks cool. In this case, I'm fo I'm following like more along the lines of this like Manson shirt or or you know some of these that are more just realistic looking and, and aren't really you know like anything crazy in terms of, of color. So um, from here, I think what I want to do is just put the text in. So like I mentioned before. One common theme that I saw was like the text is very simple. Like obviously like this has become like the Nirvana logo, um, but like, you know, the Nine Inch Nails, um, I guess logo as well as like very simple um, sans serif font. Same thing with Soundgarden here. You know, obviously this, this Alice in Chains logo is, is custom and it's not a font at all. Looks super cool, but you know, same thing, Pearl Jam option here, Smashing Pumpkins, relatively simple fonts. So um, the first instinct I had was either Knockout, uh, and these are all fonts, either a font called Knockout, a font uh, called Compacta, or um, Helvetica New, like a compressed Helvetica New. So that's what I ended up using here. Um, so if you wanna throw text in here, um, I've had some people DM me and they've been drawing a box out and then typing in text, which usually works better if you're doing like a, like a whole paragraph of stuff. Like if this was like, you know, if this was like lyrics or something and you wanted to lay that out here, sure, that could be cool because then you could do things like, um, you know, use the paragraph tool over here and you can justify all the text or you can, you know, left align it, right align it, and things like that. So it's really good for, for you know, and this would actually look pretty dope if there's like some text down here, but, um, but if you wanna just, you know, write out a band name or a clothing brand name or something relatively simple, um, all you have to do is click over here to the horizontal type tool and then just click in your canvas and then you can bring up this character box. Um, if it's not showing on your screen, just go to window character and then I'll generally just change it to like something bigger so I can see what I'm doing. In this case, we're gonna write Soundgarden. And um, I already have it, looks like the kerning already is spaced to where I had it in my other design. Um, but you know, if you wanted to mess around with it, it's as simple as just like changing these, these quantities um, and that will change the spacing between the letters um, in whatever it is you type out. So in this case, I just noticed that like in the Soundgarden examples that I saw, they generally would space the characters out quite a bit. So I found 250 looked pretty good. Now, in terms of the placement for your text on a t-shirt, um, you know, I always like to try to find a space that is pleasing to the eye, right? So like you look at these examples, and you know, this is very simple, just on the bottom, centered under, underneath the graphic, same thing here. Most of these are, you know, just like justified in the center of the graphic, right? Maybe with the exception of this Nirvana design, this Nine Inch Nails is a little bit wonky. Pearl Jam's off to the left, but for the most part, fairly simple layouts for the text. So when I look at this design, I found that this little space right here is a really nice place to set this text because it'll lay in a nice place on the shirt itself and it just sort of like lends itself to the design. Like I always like to think of, um, you know, placement for text as like finding these little pockets or like cradles. So like how, I like how this sort of will just like cradle this um, text right in here in a really nice way. So that's what we're gonna do here. And now in terms of like spacing, you know, like the negative space around the text, um, you know, it's it's never a bad idea to try to sort of make that even. Like, you know, if you wanna make this super unique, you, you know, you could certainly haphazardly throw this in here or have it down here or fucking whatever. Um, just for my own taste, I like to try to just set it up so there's a nice, 
kind of like cushion or padding around the text, right? So that's what we've got going on here. Um, so I'll just sort of set this in here and maybe make it a little bigger, but it's looking pretty good so far. Okay. And so right away I'm seeing this like weird sort of abnormality in the eclipse uh, image. So I'm straight up just going to create a new layer above the eclipse and use a paintbrush. I'm going to change the hardness to zero because this is sort of soft in itself um, as opposed to these like hard edges on the snail. And I'm just going to paint over it. Like <laughs> if this is getting screen printed um, and it's a full color image already, like you can use just like the paintbrush to get rid of some of this stuff. So. Again, this is just like a stylistic choice, something I noticed and I didn't like, so got rid of it. So yeah, that feels better to me. Then now that that's gone, I'm kind of feeling like I could maybe bump this over a little bit. Maybe I want to make sure that it's still readable, you know? So what did I, I'm just gonna look at my other example to see what I did there. Okay, so it looks like I actually had the eclipse positioned a bit differently. It's like down farther, right? So both these together. Yeah. I think I mentioned this too in my last tutorial, the, the NASCAR one where I was like, whenever I recreate these designs, they're not gonna be exactly the same because, you know, I'm not the same person I was <laughs> you know an hour ago or whenever I created that other design so I might make different choices now which is exactly what you're seeing uh, so yeah that's cool though I don't want to spend too much time on this that's the, the interesting thing about like growing shirts is like things are, are you know just like laid out pretty simple I don't think there's a ton of thought put into placement to be quite honest so I might be overthinking this. So, all right, let's just leave it how it is right here. So from here, what I think I want to do is I want to group all of the main imagery together. So I'm just like clicking the top layer here, the snail, holding down shift and just highlighting. And you can actually just highlight the, the bottom layer here. And then I'm going to uh, command G, throw them in a group. The same thing we did with our like shape layer when we were cutting that out. Then I'm going to duplicate it right away so we can always go back to it if we need to. So that's super important when you're designing, in my opinion, like duplicating stuff, saving stuff, just like having those scraps that you can go back to if you ever need to, you know, edit something else um, or, you know, add another object in there or whatever it is you're doing. So now that we have this um, group here, I'm going to convert it to a smart object. And then I'm going to see what happens if I actually apply selective color again, just to experiment and see if it, you know, makes it look cooler, basically. It's pretty weird. That's fucking cool. Yo, I wish I had done that on my, yo, that's cool as hell. I wish I had done that on my original one. Yo, that's what we're doing now. All right, so that was like a happy accident. I also love how it like blew out this eclipse and shit. Yo, hell yeah. All right, so from here, bro, we're going in like another direction now, fuck, all right. So one thing that you could do to this text, if you wanted to, is I'll sometimes go to the blend mode up here and I'll just go to difference. And that'll like create this kind of cool effect where like, um, wherever the white is hitting the graphic, it's like adapting to the graphic, um, but it's 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 creating the opposite color of it, right? So like if I inverted this whole graphic right now, you'll see that this blue color will go to like this orange and red, see? So it's just like the opposite on the spectrum. So, yeah, man, I mean, from here, I mean, do I want to use the difference thing? I don't know. I kind of want to stick to where we were going with like these examples where it's like easy, like just simple white shit. Um, but 
there's definitely been cases where this difference effect um, will come in handy and look pretty dope. So, um, all right. So from here, I think I want to throw in some texture. Um, actually, actually, first let's just mess with the brightness and air. Sorry, the levels really quick. Um, and get a little bit more black into this design. Not too much though, because I want it to have sort of this, um, this effect that's like similar to um, this graphic or similar to, not really that, um, kind of that, like where it looks like there's an underbase of white um, sh showing through which you know gives it the sense that it has been printed um, a long time ago. So I think we can now just throw some texture on here. I'm gonna grab the texture that I used in this original example, and I have a little treat for you guys. So this grunge um, texture is called Soft Cloud Grunge, and it is not available on my website for download. Um, it's not available avail, available for purchase, um, but I have found that I use it quite a bit. So rather than you know put it, putting it in the next texture pack and selling it, um, I'm just going to link it below for you guys so you have it to use. Um, commercial, or whatever you want to use it for. Um, it's honestly one of the best textures that I use, and I'm going to show you why it's the best in a second. So I'm just going to go down to this example, and you can actually just click Command A. And that's actually grabbing all the grunge from this uh, masking layer. And I'm hitting Command C. So now we have our grunge. And now we're gonna create a new texture layer. And right now I'm gonna throw up a card for how to use textures in designs so you guys know how to do this um, properly. So this, is, this is just sort of a quick workaround for the video. Um, so we're gonna group these two to, uh, layers together. Command G, and then we're going to create a uh, masking layer, a layer mask, <laughs> masking layer, layer mask. What are they called? They, they're calling it a vector mask. All right, so actually I'm an idiot. All right, vector mask, whatever. It's a layer mask. Look, now it says layer mask thumbnail. I'm calling it a layer mask. All right, anyways. So let's jump inside of our layer mask, hold down option and click this little window for this like thumbnail, right, of the white. And then do Command V, and that's going to throw in our texture. And um, from here, you can just click, hold down Option, and click this again. And now we're out. And like, bro, look at how fucking dope that texture is. It's like, it's so fine, and like, just totally gives the design this look that it's like a vintage, faded, fucking '90s graphic. Um, I'm gonna go back to this difference thing and just see again how that looks. Ah, man, I'm so torn. I'm not gonna use it, whatever. All right, so, man, I mean, from here, what could you do? I mean, we could mess more with the levels if we wanted to, we could, I kinda wanna just use the classic brightness and contrast because it's it'll be a lot quicker. I don't want to lose this text too. You can see if I make it too bright, it'll lose the text. I don't know, man. This might be good, honestly. I think one other thing I did when I was creating this example was I did go to image adjustments and exposure, but that was when it looked a little bit different than this. Um, but if you go to offset and you bring offset down, you'll like just drain the fucking image of like any of the dark um, values so you can see that they like basically disappear so I don't want to totally remove them because I want you to be able to see some of the detail in the snail here so yeah man I mean maybe just a little bit gamma correction yeah. I think it's good man I I'm gonna see what this looks like on a t-shirt so to do that I'm just gonna go down to this bottom layer Hold down shift, click the top layer, and go to merge layers. And so from here, I'll just go to image, image size, 2400 pixels, because that's the size of the mock we're using. 
Command A is gonna grab the whole thing. Command C, go over into our, whoops, where's our, there it is, the mock. And make sure we are underneath the highlights and shadows and just hit Command V, paste it in. Convert to a smart object right away. Hold down Option, that's gonna drag it to the center of the t-shirt. Then I'm gonna hold down Shift to drag it up and change the blending mode to screen. Boom. Yeah, bro, I mean, look, the other one was fine too, but I think this looks like way cooler. This was not, it, this was like totally just like off the cuff and not planned, so that's dope. Um, yeah, man, I mean, this, this texture that I added helps so much, um, but it's that in combination with if, if you are planning on doing any sort of vintage style graphic, the blank that you use is so important in terms of the wash, in terms of the feel, um, you know, obviously using something that has a softer feel to it is gonna be nice, something with a, a nice neckline on it. I don't wanna to get too far into detail about this topic because I do have some t-shirt samples that are on their way to me that I'm going to make a proper video about. Um, I've had, you know, a lot of you guys message me and ask like, what are the best blanks to use? Or like, what are the companies I should be using? Um, so I am gonna do a proper video about that. Until that time, I always recommend Comfort Colors and I recommend Bella. Um, Comfort Colors has a really nice shape to their shirts and they have a lot of um, color options and a lot of them have sort of a faded, like um, like this super vintage black, like um, I believe it's graphite is the color that they have that is pretty damn close to this. So that's what I recommend, um, but I am going to do a proper video about that at some point, so stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, man, I mean, this is pretty much done. I mean, I would, you know, adjust the opacity on this just for the sake of the mock and, and making it look a little bit more printed. But like if I saw this on Grailed or whatever, eBay, Etsy, like I'm picking this shirt up. And that of course is the goal, right? Like you want to create designs that you would wear yourself that you think are super dope and put them out there in the world and, you know, see what everyone else thinks. So that's it for today's tutorial. I hope that you guys found this useful and you're able to apply some of the techniques and tips um, from this video to your own designs. That is always the goal of this channel. I want you guys to be you know, fully independent and be able to make choices on your own and, and just use some of the knowledge that you got from these videos to make your own decisions. One thing that you guys could do that would be super amazing is just hitting the subscribe button. Um, I can actually see the numbers and it's kind of crazy. Uh, the last time I checked, it was 70% of people who have watched all these videos are not subscribed. So if you have seen like even more than, you know, two of these videos, um, consider subscribing because I'm more than likely gonna drop something else in the future that you're gonna be into. So rather than like, searching my name or like searching whatever like it'll just show up on your feed and if you hit the bell notification as well it'll notify you as soon as the video drops also be sure to like this video and comment below if you have any questions about things i did in this video or things you want to see in the future um, your guys's comments are super crucial and they've been really great and they've led to you know me doing other videos that i wouldn't have um, done otherwise so keep commenting and you know I'll always reply to you guys you can always um, hit me up on Instagram as well it is at fuller.moe um, you know you guys are um, welcome to hit me up if you need feedback on designs you've created if you have questions I'm often like linking you guys to other videos that I've done um, because a lot of your questions have been covered on this channel already. So yeah, definitely give me a follow on Instagram and DM me if you have any questions. I hope everyone is staying safe. Um, you know, we were already in the middle of this pandemic with coronavirus and now, you know, the world is basically on fire with everything that happened with George Floyd. Um, you know, it's fucking heartbreaking. Um, and I hope that everyone is, you know, paying attention and trying to stay informed and doing what you can to, um, you know, try to help the situation and, and push the agenda and fucking 
end racism. Like, I mean, obviously it's like a s systemic thing and it's, it's, it's much bigger than any, any one of us, but like, I'm so fucking, I can't, I can't believe that racism is a thing in 2020. I can't believe it was a thing in, in 2000. I can't believe it was a thing in 1990. Like it's the dumbest fucking shit on earth. And without going into a, a rant, um, I just want to say that, you know, I love everyone and I hope everyone is staying safe and, um, you know, let's fucking, let's fight this shit and let's, let's make a, a real difference in the world. That is it for today.